letter. In the word, the fourth letter, S, the S stands for sharing in God's kingdom plans. Sharing in God's kingdom plans. When we bring all of our tithes into the storehouse, what happens is we participate in God's work. Individuals bring their tithes and their gifts together to, uh, uh, to create a community of believers, a body by which the work of God has, is done and gets done. When we come together and when you work together, you can do more together than you can ever hope to do by yourself. So you share in God's kingdom plan. Everywhere I go in this community, everywhere you go in this community, people know about St. John Baptist Church because of its outreach of radio ministry and broadcast, because of its community service such as the food pantry and the feeding of the homeless and the Watkins Nance Project, which is all a part of what God has done to bless this place. So it's great to be a part of something that God is doing. And when you tithe, you share in God's kingdom plan. You get to be a part of something that's way bigger than you could ever dream of or ever do by yourself. The fifth letter T stands for testing God's power in your life. Let me say that again. Tithing is testing God's power in your life. Notice Malachi 10 says, Try me now. In this, says the Lord of hosts. What is he saying? The word try in the text really means to test. It means to put God to the test. And I know a lot of folks say don't put God to the test, but God wants you to put him to the test. In other words, God is saying, I want you to test me. Try me and see if I will not bless you. God is more willing to be tested, and he wants to prove himself faithful to us. This is the direct answer to people who say to me all the time, well, I don't know if I can trust God to meet all my needs. They feel like if they give to God the tithe the first of every month, then they wouldn't have enough money left over. Well, the only way to test God is to do it. You have to try it. God is going to, is going to honor you if you honor him, especially if, you put, if you're put into a tight financial bind than normal because you tried him. But if you wait and see if you have enough money to tie you're putting him last. You're bringing a maimed sheep. You're bringing a deaf animal. You're bringing, bringing a blind animal to the Lord. God wants you to test him. People think that they have to get their priorities straightened out before they begin to tie. Well, let me just tell you what I've learned. The best way to get your priorities straightened out is to tie. You put God first, then everything else will begin to fall into place. God wants you to test him. You say, well, pastor, I've never done it anything like this. All the more reason why you should try. Because he'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. And guess what? You will never understand what God can do until you get, give him a chance and put him to the test. Maybe you need to commit to tithing for the next three months. Say, God, I'm going to commit to tithing for the next three months and see if God won't bless you. I guarantee you, if you would t test God, you will not miss it. Why? Because God is just waiting for you to test him so that he can bless you. So tithing is trusting. Look at number six. The I in trusting means investing in the only permanent, permanent commodities there are. Let me repeat that. Tithing 
is investing in the only permanent commodities there are. You see, when you look at the stock market and the recent economic downturn a few years ago, we realize that nothing on earth is permanent. Your retirement is not permanent. Your investments are not reliable. They can be up today and down tomorrow. And even if you save up a good retirement, there is no guarantee that you will live to enjoy it. Even the gold standard is tested every now and then. There are only two permanent commodities in the whole universe. Let me say what they are. The word of God, which lives and abides forever, and the souls of human beings. The word of God and the souls of human beings. Those are the only two things that will last forever. One day, one of these days, according to the Bible, there's going to be a heat that will take over and it will destroy the world as we see it now. But the souls of humans will never die. And let me just say this while we're in the midst of the stewardship message, that your soul, you will, you will live forever somewhere. Whether it's in heaven with the Lord or in hell apart from him. We do not get annihilated when we die. We live, we will live forever. The soul lives forever. The Bible, God's word lives forever. Those are the only two things that will never perish. Now let me ask you the question. How would you like to be involved in an absolutely guaranteed surefire investment that will never fail? Here's the investment. Invest your life in the word of God. And invest your life in the souls of people. And when you do that, you're sending up your treasures in heaven. That's what it means. How do you send your treasures in heaven? You reach and you witness to the people on earth. And when they are saved, they go to heaven. And guess what? That's your treasure. Are you going to have any treasure when you get to heaven? You say, Pastor, well, I'm not much of a soul winner. No, that's not the issue alone. That's, that's important. But every dime you give, that results in someone coming to Christ, that's a part of the treasures that you're sending on to heaven and nothing can touch it. Matthew 6, write this down. Matthew 6, 19 and 20 says, do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust and destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. Where neither moth or rust destroy, nor thieves can break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there is your heart also. In my studies, as I was trying to prepare for this stewardship month, I ran across one of the most powerful statements I've ever read about stewardship. And this is, this is it. He says, you are, not, you are either moving away from your treasure or you're moving towards it. You're either moving away from your treasure or you're moving towards it. All of your treasure, if all your treasure is the things on this earth, then you're moving away from your treasure. Can I get a witness? When you see your steps getting slower, when you see that your eyes are getting dimmer, your hair is getting grayer, then guess what? You're moving away from the treasures, your treasures on earth. But if you send up treasures in heaven, you're moving towards it. Now, would you rather be moving away from your treasure or towards it? 
You're moving towards it if you're winning souls for the kingdom. If you're sowing into